Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. The second video in a series on starting seeds indoors is all about the containers and the starting mix. What do you need? The first video talked about lighting. I'll put a link to that video with this one. So when you're starting seeds indoors, you have to think about how many seed starts you're going to have. You know, do you just need a flat like this of 72 cells? Are you starting fewer? Do you need a bigger container or bigger cell size or something even larger? Or do you want to go right into something like that? And the difference being right over here is my grow light station. And you don't need to set something up as elaborate as that. But I uh, start, you know, three, four, five hundred transplants indoors. So I have a bigger setup. When you're starting that many, you want to start your seeds in the smaller cells. And then as they get to size, you pot them up into bigger containers. You would move from there into something like that. If you're not growing that many, if you're not growing, you know, 50, 100, 200, 300, you could start your tomatoes right in here. And the difference being is that they can just stay in here for that six week period and you don't have to transplant them up. If you want to just start them into containers, either you recycle or repurpose or ones that you purchase. I sell all of this at my seed shop if you want to check that out. Then you don't really have to pot them up and you save yourself a step. So we're going to be really talking about two different ways. When you're doing a lot of transplants, we start with something like this. When you're doing fewer transplants, you can go ahead and purchase these bigger cells. Now before you get to those, you're going to always want to water from the bottom. You don't want to water the top. Splashes the soil around, can splash disease around. We're going to talk about the seed starting mix and I'm going to show you the number one way to prevent your seed starts from getting fungus gnats, diseases, molds, fungus, all that kind of stuff. It's really easy. It's basically boiling water. So you can, again, you can go to my seed shop and you can get these flats, the black ones. You can go to the store, you can get something like this. These are for uh, flower pots that you're growing stuff indoors. Either way, these are going to be saucers that you can use to hold water. You can use muffin tins. If you're just growing a couple of transplants, you would set something up just like that. Fill the water down there. The water will come up and it will take care of your seed starts. So you can save these from the season. You can get them from neighbors. You can ask neighbors to hold containers for you. You're going to need some sort of tabs to mark what you seed start. You know, on the first day, you're going to remember what these are. Three days later, you're not going to remember what you have growing. And it's really hard to keep track of them. So you definitely want to label everything. You can get tins like this from the dollar store. Um, you can use baking tins. Anything that you can set trays in. You know, if you're not going to be doing something elaborate with a whole flat and you just need one of these, that's going to work perfectly fine. Just work with it, whatever you have available to you, whatever is within your budget. Typically, I work with the larger flats. A larger flat fits nicely right under here and you can seed start 72 plants at once when you're using the smaller cells. It's all up to you. You do need to use grow lights. Windows are not going to work. The first video explains how to set up your grow lights or what to buy. So they basically drop in just like that. Again, if I'm just doing six tomatoes, six peppers, uh, maybe some perennial flowers, something else, I don't need this. I don't need to start small and then spend time potting them up as they get bigger. I would go to a bigger cell just like that. So I can put in my pepper seeds, my tomato seeds. I could even start because these are bigger squash and cucumbers in here. This might be all that I need for the setup. So just think about what you want to do. And I like if you have a smaller garden and you're not doing as many transplants, just plant into the bigger cells and then you don't have to transplant them. A tomato and pepper can stay in here for its six week, eight week period of time as it gets larger. If you were going to use the smaller cells, like a quick switch, just like that, uh, after about, I don't know, probably four weeks or so, a lot of times your tomatoes are ready to come out of here. Maybe five or six weeks your peppers come out and you just pop them out 
and you would put them into a cup about this size. You also want to have another tray available so that you can set up your new potted up plants into containers like this because we always want to pour water into the tray and let the water absorb from the bottom. It's hygienically better for your plants and it's a lot easier than putting water into everything. So these are kind of the basic supplies that you need for containers, for cells, for flats to get started. If you're picking this up uh, through Amazon or sometimes at Home Depot or Walmart, a lot of times they come with a humidity dome. I don't recommend it. I've never used them really in 15 years. They're not necessary. If you can't keep an eye on your plants every couple of days for moisture, um, maybe use a humidity dome, but I don't see another reason for that. When you put that on top of there, sometimes it creates a very humid space and it helps breed fungus and molds more quickly. Now I have an Amazon shop. It's uh, attached to the uh, description of this video if you want to go there and check out the links it takes to, to some of these different products. And you can use them as a price point on Amazon. Um, you can buy them through Amazon or go to my seed shop because I sell all of this. Now once you decide on what kind of containers you want, you're going to need seed starting mix. Any mix works. I don't particularly recommend Jiffy, but that's what you'll see everywhere. Your seed starting mix is basically a combination of peat moss, sometimes cocoa core, vermiculite, sometimes perlite's thrown in there. A cocoa core, if it's just pure core, can also have fungus gnat eggs. And if you've ever gotten fungus gnats, they're the little black, um, really, gnats that fly around your plant. They land on the soil, lay eggs, the eggs, you know, turn into larva, larva crawl into the soil, they eat the roots of your seed starts, and it kills off your plants. The eggs are almost indestructible. You're going to have them in most of your seed starting mixes, so you have to kill them off. And the easiest way to do it is before you get started. We're going to, I'm going to cut into here, and I'm just going to show you. Basically, boil water. Hydrate this with the boiling water. The boiling water will kill off everything in here and you will have a 100% sterile starting mix. That's what you want. Again, a lot of times people say, well, there's no nutritional value in here. There's no soil life. That's fine. That's perfectly fine for starting seed. You don't need to put any additives into this. Just use boiling water, make it sterile, get the plant started, and I'll show you how to do it, how to uh, plant the seeds in a future video. Your seed starting mix is pretty much dry, so you want to put it into a container. Not only does pouring boiling water on here sterilize it, you want to start with hydrated seed starting mix, and I'll talk about that in future videos. So this is a big container. This is a full thing of uh, Jiffy mix in there. Here's one that I already did for another video. And basically, you're going to bring water to a boil. You're going to need somewhere you know, from a couple of quarts to a gallon, depending on how much of the mix you're using. And just stir it in, just like that. Now, you don't want to bring anything from the outdoors in here, no soil, no compost, anything like that. That's going to, I can actually see a little insect flying around there. Um, don't want to bring anything from outside in there, because you're going to be bringing into here. You're going to be bringing in insects, Funguses, disease, molds, not all of that is bad. But when you have that inside, there's no nature around to keep it in check. So the stuff kind of just goes crazy. I want to add a little bit more into there. And this is for seed starting. I'm also, you know, in other videos I talked about putting in different fertilizers and stuff like that. You don't need to do that. It's not necessary. This is a starting mix. In my potting up mix, when I move the seedlings from the smaller cells into bigger cups. That's when I like to have in my organic fertilizers and other amendments. You just want this for starting the seeds, getting them going, keep it simple. Because there's no microbiology life in here, if you put in organic fertilizers, there's no microbiology to break them down and make it uh, available to your plants. If you have to put something in, and sometimes I do that, I put in worm castings. And I use a specific brand that I really trust. And again, I'll talk about that in future videos. But to keep it simple, you don't need to add anything into here. This is your starting mix. In other videos, we'll create a potting mix. 
It's become dark, it's saturated, it's heated. Drop some foil across the top, press it down, and then just let this cool down over 20 or 30 minutes before you use it. And that will take care of fungus gnat eggs, kill off anything that's in the starting mix, and it's really, I mean, I probably can't say 100% perfect, but it's 99% perfect. This is how you can really start your seeds off well without having to worry about problems coming in. And again, based on scale, if you're just doing a little bit, a smaller pot, some starting mix, and just make it as you need it. So these are the basic supplies you need in some form and your starting mix. I do recommend getting a container like this because once you sterilize it, you can dump it into here and it's just easy to use. If you want to make a bunch of the uh, sterile starting mix with the boiling water, you can do a lot of bags, put it in here, close it off, and it's going to be fine. You just got to decide how much you want to start. You can do something like this. Just go right to the larger pots. You don't need anything fancy. Maybe, again, six tomatoes. This setup would be if you're starting more. This is 72 cells in here. You can get all of these at my seed shop. In the next video, I'll show you how to get the cells packed with the starting mix, plant some seeds, and we'll get them over to my grow light station. And again, you might just want one level, you might want two levels, you may want something smaller, but the beauty about starting seeds indoors is you can go really small, you can go really large, but it's a lot of fun, and you'll be successful if you follow this series. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.